And so the third place was awarded to Bruna Cusco, and I hope I am pronouncing your name correctly. And she's from Brazil, and she's here, and she's going to talk about um, her entry. Bruna? Hi, everyone. Yes, my name is correctly. Uh, thanks for your presence and for the chance to be here talking to you. My name is Bruna Curcio. I am a communicologist, and in my work centers on how we create and use message to affect our social environment. I focus on audiovisual solutions and use photography as a major part of my work. Uh, I made the photography series Varais, which means clothesline in Portuguese. It won third place in the photography competition. And I will talk a little bit more about the name and the photograph in, in a second. But first, I will give you a bit of context about how and why I was able to take these pictures. Taking these pictures was only possible because of the research project that I've been working on called HEGIT, which stands for Redressing Gendered Health Inequalities of displaced to women and girls. This project is founded by the Research Councils of United Kingdom, Global Challenges Research Fund, and its goals are to identify the sexual and reproductive health needs of women and adolescent girls displaced from Central America to Mexico and from Venezuela to Brazil and Colombia. Analyze the challenges, assess the impact of displacement on local health systems, and produce original primary data. I will post the website in the chat in case you want to check it out. Um, one second. Presenting to you a little bit of myself, my work, and those pictures, I couldn't help but mention the beloved people who make everything possible. First of all, uh, thanks to my husband and my family who have been always supporting me. And of course, the incredible team who I work with in this project, which is Pia Higorosi, Professor of Global Politics, uh, Department of Politics and International Relations in the University of Southampton. She's the amazing PI of the project and was also the one who encouraged me to submit my pictures. Talula Lines, my colleague and friend who coordinates along with me the photo voice methodology inside the HEGID project. And Natalia Sintra, a fellow researcher from HEGID who supports us on photo voice and makes everything easier. Uh, together with the Hegid project, we have used a methodology named PhotoVoice, which consists of an art-based methodology valued for its potential to transcend cultural, linguistic, and academic borders to facilitate more egalitarian research and to provide richer and multi-layered data regarding the lived experiences of people on the move. In the context of HEGID, we asked the migrant women who participated in this research to take photographs in response to the theme of sexual and reproductive health, then share and discuss them in a focus group. The photographs and the testimonials taken by them are now being analyzed and organized in a photo book to be shared with NGOs, policymakers, and other interested parties like you, <laughs> if you're interested, we're gonna share with you. <laughs> Photographs are an important part of HEGID, as well as using photo voice methodology with migrant women. Myself and a friend of mine, Alini, have been employed throughout the project to document the, to document the experiences of migrant women, as well as the research activities carried out. I took the pictures you see in this ex exhibition, in 2019, one year before we started working on photo voice during an exploratory field trip to Boa Vista, Roraima, and later to Manaus, Amazonas. 
Both cities are part of the migration road from Venezuela to Brazil. And during this trip, we had the chance to visit the shelters where migrants settle once they arrive here in Brazil. In the first picture, you can see a shelter in Manaus that was only for indigenous people from the Warao ethnic group. And then the other two pictures, you can see shelters from the Operação Acolhida, which is a large humanitarian task force executed and coordinated by the federal government with the support of federal entities, UN agencies, international organizations, civil society organizations, and private entities. The operation offers emergency assistance to Venezuelan refugees and migrants that enter Brazil through the border with Horaima. Uh, and they act in three main services, border planning, shelter, and interiorization. Uh, it was very touching, sometimes very sad to be able to travel and photograph everyday moments of people on the move. However, it was very fast. The pictures are beautiful, but they only tell the story that I see as an outsider. It is important that viewers also remember that what they see in these photos or any photos of displaced people is just a snapshot of their lives. By choosing these three pictures to make up series, I want the viewer to understand a narrative that is based on commonalities between themselves and migrant people, to find common needs in daily activities, such as hanging clothes in the line, doing laundry, watching the kids play, playing. I try to stay away from editing and compositions that would direct our feelings and perceptions and create difference between us like big fat eyes, desaturated colors, shadows bringing up the aspect of dirtiness or poverty. No, none of that. It is very hot, hot in the north of Brazil, extremely hot and humid, and the sun makes all the colors look incredibly vibrant, and it made sense to be loyal to that. I wanted to be very careful not to take authorship of a story that wasn't mine, even though I knew there were so many stories that needed to be told. Luckily, a few months after this exploratory field trip, the opportunity arose to coordinate and produce Photo Voice locally in Manaus. Through Photo Voice, I had the opportunity to work for a long and continuous period with indigenous and non-indigenous migrant women and adolescents. They participated in photography workshops and focus groups and received digital cameras to take pictures that would tell their own stories as migrant women. The result is stunning, revealing and moving, especially because of the testimonies that accompany the images. The photos and words are powerful and unique material that brings to us the story told by those who are living it. The book will be released this year. So, as a photographer, I truly believe in the power of an impact of an image, whether in a video or a photograph. Images can raise awareness, create new positions, and consequently new habits. Combining photography and research is like a dream job that makes me understand the powerful tool we have in our hands, capable of making us take action through empathy to promote social responsibility in the face of the suffering of minorities. To conclude, I would like to read a little poem from Rupi Kaur, who is a feminist migrant called The Sun and the Flowers. I stand on the sacrifices of a million women before me, thinking, what can I do to make this mountain taller? So the women after me can see farther. Legacy. Thank you very much. <laughs>